My name is Jue Liu, and this work is about preconditioned total field inversion for quantitative susceptibility mapping. The QSM can reveal the biomatter distribution in human tissue, such as the iron in hemoglobin, deep green matter and hemorrhage, the calcium in calcification and the bone mineralization, or gadolinium in some conscious agents. It can also quantify the anisotropic structures such as the neural bundle in white matter or the cartilage. So it is very helpful to assess the tissue function and some disease such as in characterizing the MS lesions, localizing the SDN nuclei for deep brain stimulation, and quantifying the iron deposit in the human liver. An essential step in QSM is to solve the inverse problem for a spatial distribution of the susceptibility from the field input. Suppose now we have the total field, and what we usually do is to first separate the major component, which is the background field, from the local tissue field. It has been shown that the background field can be modeled at the, as the field generated by the sources outside the ROI and after removing that field we can invert the tissue susceptibility from the local field only. Since these two steps are using the same forward model in their fitting, why don't we just fit these two at once? Here we propose the framework of the total field inversion which used the same objective function as the local field inversion method MEDI, except that the, the input now is the total field and the unknown is the total susceptibility over the entire field of view. We can even use the same iterative CG solver, but the challenge is, is in the speed. We notice that um, the total field inversion is far more CG iterations in order to reach the same solution as the local field inversion. The snapshot here shows that the local field inversion needs only 50 CG iterations to converge. Meanwhile, the total field inversion needs at least 300 CG iterations to reach the same solution as the local field inversion. In this work, we apply the preconditioning to accelerate the convergence of TFI. The P here is the right preconditioner we add to the problem. If we use the matrix formulation, we can see that the effect of the preconditioner is to modify the cryo space of the CG solver. An ideal preconditioner makes the cryo space as similar as possible to the final solution in order to accelerate the convergence. Now, if we look at the histogram in the, in the final solution, we notice that the variance for the background sources is much larger than the variance of the tissue. On the other hand, if we don't apply any preconditioning, this strong contrast is not reflected by the cryo of space. And if we try to increase the weight for the background region in the preconditioner, we notice that the histogram of each vector in the cryo of space starts to match the histogram of the final solution, which might indicate faster convergence. The plot on the left from a numerical simulation demonstrates the change of the estimation error with respect to the CG iteration number using different weight and preconditioner. And we can, and from the plot, we can choose the preconditioner which gives the optimal convergence. And it shows that with the chosen preconditioner, the convergence of the total field inversion is indeed improved. For the experiment, we first 
design a simulation where we put a single point source of 0.1 ppm in the ROI without simulating the background field. And we applied each method to see how accurate it is in estimating single point source. Then for the in vivo experiment, we first acquired data on healthy subjects with multiple scan orientations. And then the cosmos map is reconstructed and regarded as the reference map. The weight in the preconditioner is optimized by minimizing the error between the estimated map and the reference map. And then the same preconditional weight is, is applied to another database, which is acquired on the patient with intracerebral hemorrhage. It is noted that the preconditional weight is also applied to the region of the hemorrhage, which is segmented by thresholding the R2 star. We compare our preconditioned total free inversion with other Laplacian based total free inversion method. Two examples are differential QSM, which use L1 regularization, and single step QSM, which use L2. And we also include the traditional separate feeding method implemented using PDF and MEDI. Here shows the error map from the numerical simulation. At each point, it indicates if we put the single point source at this location, how much error we will get in estimating the value of that source. So here shows that the total field inversion significantly reduced the error, especially when the source is close to the RI boundary. So here shows an example of the QSM map comparison for all the methods. We notice that the homogeneity of the QSM map at the brain boundary is improved in the preconditioned total field inversion. And we also notice that the brain cortex, such as the sagittal sinus, is eroded in two other Laplacian based methods as required by the Laplacian operation. However, the same structure is preserved on the preconditioned total field inversion. In ROI measurement of the deep green matters, we notice that for globus pallidus, the single step QSM has significant underestimation, probably due to the L2 organization used in its objective function. For QSM of patients with intracerebral hemorrhage, we notice that for all three other methods, the hemorrhage induced strong shadow artifact and degrades the surrounding QSM. Meanwhile, the preconditioned total field inversion suppressed that artifact because the Preconditioner accounts for the strong contrast between the hemorrhage and the brain tissue. Since the preconditioned total field inversion can estimate the susceptibility over the entire field of view, it enables the QSM for the entire head whose susceptibility ranges from 0.1 ppm for soft tissue to about 9 ppm of air inside the sinus. Here it shows the magnitude and whole head QSM for a healthy subject. And we try to measure the susceptibility within the air, scalp, and fat. And we found the measurements are consistent with the values reported in the literature. In summary, total field inversion avoids separate feedings of the background field and local field and reduce the associated error. The preconditioning helps to accelerate the TFI and also reduce the QSM artifact due to the strong susceptibility contrast. And finally, the preconditioned total field inversion enables the QSM for the entire head. Thank you for listening.